Hey there, I'm Curtis. I'm with Alternative Berlin Tours. I do the street art tour and workshop. Normally we like to take people around the city and show them graffiti and street art, and then we give them a workshop. But today you get the icing on the cake. We're gonna skip that part, unfortunately, because of what's going on in the world. And we're gonna go straight to the workshop, which means I'm gonna show you guys how to do some uh, spray painting. Normally with, of course, spray paint. Show you guys how to make some stencils. 3D, really cool styles. Uh, full background, full color, all sorts of things, okay? So stay right there and we're gonna show you some beautiful work. So what we're going to be doing today is showing you guys how to make your own piece of street art. Now it's gonna be full color, 3D effects, some lighting, some shading. Show you guys a little bit of tricks so that you can maybe, you know, do this more often. Wink, wink, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> So the first part of this is me showing you guys how to create a stencil, how to create it and how to cut it out, okay? But you're not gonna be doing this freehand. Freehand is, well, that's a whole nother class as well. A stencil is basically taking a picture, making it very black and white, putting the contrast up very, very high, and then basically you're to cut out the black shapes. Perfect example would be something like this. Now, many of you are probably saying, wow, that's Frankenstein. And I'm not to tell you, you're absolutely incorrect. This is not Frankenstein. This is Frankenstein's monster. Every nerd right now is like really proud of me for saying that. Anyways, this is Frankenstein's monster, yeah? Basically, what you're going to do, and you can't use scissors for this, and I'll explain to you why. What you're going to need is something like this, an actual cutter, an actual knife. Some people use an X-Acto blade. Some people like to use um, box cutters, which is also basically what this is. So you're gonna need something like this that you're gonna to create to make it very black and white and something to cut it out with. You cannot use scissors for this, all right? That's basically all you need for now. What you're to do is, you're to cut out the black shapes, okay? Not the white shapes. All the white has to stay on the page, okay? You're to cut out all the black shapes, put them in a pile, throw them away, and never think of them again, okay? So the reason why you can't use scissors is because you have to keep the white. If you try to use scissors, you're gonna to have to cut into the white to get to the black. That's why you have to use one of these. Uh, uh. To use one of these, it's quite simple. First of all, you do not need to take the blade all the way out of here. This is not Game of Thrones. We're not sword fighting, all right? All you basically need to do is put it down to about there. Should be no longer than that. If you're using something like this, little hint for you, there's a latch on the bottom. If you pull down the latch, it will hold the blade in place. Now you have a choice. Since I can't see you right now, you can break the rules, which means you can hold it like a pencil or a pen. Pop quiz for you though. Is this a pencil or a pen? If you answer no, you answered correctly. This is not a pencil or a pen. So if you hold it like this, you're only going to cut with the edge. You're gonna cut pretty much with the, uh, the, the corner, the tip, okay? That's not gonna be uh, great for you. It's gonna be messy. It's not gonna work out that well. If you want a clean and professional cut, this is the way you're going to hold it. Finger up top, rest goes into the palm of your hand, thumb on the side. Think of it like a co uh, computer mouse, yeah? For everyone that's too young to know what a computer mouse is, that's what we used to use in the old days. It's called the 90s. Anyways, that's basically how you're going to do this. You're gonna cut it out, holding it like this, get a nice clean cut, cut out all the black shapes. And when you do cut out all the black shapes, it's going to basically look like something like this, all right? That is Tupac with the word art on it. Now, I don't know what you're saying. This dude comes from Brooklyn. Why is he holding up Tupac? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a biggie, which means I need to talk to my boss about that. We should have a notorious B.I.G. in here. But anyways, that's basically what you're going to be making, all right? That's what your stencil is going to look like. Fair enough? All right. So, after you got done doing the fun part, which is cutting, I know you had so much fun doing that. What you're going to do next is, well, we're gonna paint. We're gonna paint this stencil, okay? So the stencil I'm gonna be using, since I'm gonna be using a little bit of a larger board, so I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna be using this lovely young, young lady right here. Yeah, something a lot bigger. Yeah? So what you're going to need, you're going to need, uh, well, you're gonna need something to paint on. You can use some wood. You can use your walls at home. If you're about you know, under 13 or 14 years old, please ask your parents if you could paint the walls. Or do what I did and just paint the walls anyways and see what happens after that. If my mom is watching this, she's remembering right now what she did to me. So anyways, that's just, that's just my hint for you. Anyways, 
uh, you're going to need something like a board, something to paint on. I'm using something that's more like a cardboard. Yeah? You're also going to need paints, obviously. And most of you are not going to have spray paints at home. To be honest with you, you can buy paints anywhere online, yeah? whether it's going to be acrylics, which I'm going to show you how to use as well, yeah? uh, spray paint. If you're going to do this in your home or outside your home or anywhere, I would say go with MTN 94, which is what we use here. MTN 94 is what we call low pressure can. Okay, so the paint doesn't come out super fast. If you're not used to using cans, I would suggest using something that's low pressure. There are also cans, especially for you children out there, watercolor. You can use watercolor paint. There's no fumes, so you don't have to really worry about that stinking up the entire house. Okay? Please make sure you open up a window. Please do not make sure you wear like the most coolest outfit that your parents just bought you. Or if you are parents, please do not wear a tuxedo while doing this. All right? You're messing with paint. And this paint never comes out of your clothes. When I say never, I mean like never. Never, never? Yeah, that type of never. Like, it's never coming out of your clothes. So please make sure you have either some plastic gown type thing or clothes that you don't really care about anymore. I would also suggest, if you really want to go super professional, get a mask. You can also use those same, like, N94s, which most of us nowadays, unfortunately, have a mask of some sort in their uh, place. So, unfortunately, you probably are supplied with masks. Also, last gloves. You're going to need some rubber gloves. If you want to get your paint on your hands, don't worry about it. The paint comes out of your hands, okay? If you want to get it done really fast, go to a store, get some nail polish remover, and it takes it off instantly, okay? So don't worry about getting paint on your skin or something like that. Um, that's basically all you're going to need. Stencil, board, paint, and next we're going to show you what you also need, which is some skills, all right? So I'm going to teach you that next. So, what we're going to do next is the fun part, is painting. Actually, hopefully you've already been having fun, but this is the, like, this is the cherry like, on the cake, right? This, this is the big part. Uh, and I have to, there's, some, there's some rules to this painting, and especially if you want to try to be a professional and use spray paint. Not to say using a brush or a sponge is not professional, but for street stuff, you want to use paint that's well, painting fast. Normally, you don't want to use a paintbrush or a, a, a sponge or something. You want to use spray paint. So to do this correctly, okay? Something I do not want to see anyone doing, which I can't see you doing this anyway, so fair enough. But don't do it. I don't want to see people painting like this very, very slowly. You see what happened? That is dripping. That is nasty. Maybe you do want drips. If you don't want drips, please do not just paint and holding it like that. Okay? Also, I do not want to see, and you're lucky that I can't see if you do this, but I don't want to see people painting really fast like that. I mean, yes, you do look really cool and aggressive. You look like, you know, going out in the middle of the night, you're putting up your mask and you're spray painting really fast. But guess what? Even though we go out in the middle of the night and do it really fast, none of us paint like that. If you do paint like that, all you're going to make is something I like to call nothing. That's not how we do it in the streets. Whether it's legal or illegal, we do not paint like that, okay? So the correct way to paint is quite simple. It's a quick and easy method. It's called on and off. Yes, kids, this, believe it or not, there's a such thing as on and off. Do not just hold down the spray cap the whole time. What I'm going to show you guys is what we call can control. So let's get started. Pick any color. Now I know what you're thinking. What color should I pick? Let me make this really easy for you. I'm going to use that word again. It's called any. Use any color. Don't get hung up on what colors you should use. This should be fun, all right? So just don't get, you know, overwhelmed by that. If you cannot figure out what color to use, buy a bunch of colors, you look at every color, and I'm gonna teach you guys some German right now, except for if you're German, then I'm not teaching you anything. Uh, but it's two basic words, warum nicht? You look at any color and you say these magic words, you say warum nicht? So on the count of three, all of you are to say the words warum nicht? One, two, three. I didn't hear you, but I, I'm pretty sure you said it. So warum nicht just means why not? basically that easy. Pick a color and say why not. You can also use your own respective language as well. All right, so let's get into this. On and off method. Left to right, up or down, diagonal. I don't care which direction you go. Just make sure you're going on and off. That way you're going to get nice, smooth amounts of paint. Let me show you. No drips whatsoever. 
for two reasons. One, I'm really, really good at this. Two, I'm doing what I said I would do, on and off. Now, I'm only going to do half of this. And if anyone is saying that's more than half, be quiet. I know I did. <laughs> Anyways, we're only going to do half of this first, yeah? Because I'm going to show you guys how to make colors blend. Maybe you don't want your background to just be one color. But you have to start with your background first and then your stencil. Stencil is the dead last thing, okay? So first, we're going to go with some background colors, okay? So I have a nice red on there. I'm just going to say Valhunnisht and pick this light purple. Actually, I'm lying to you. I did say Vahu Nish. I already have this set up already, so fair enough. Anyways, light purple next. And now each time I was doing that, I was going on and off. I know I made that look really fast. I'm used to doing it really fast. But I made it go on and off, on and off. You get these nice thin coats. Now, for you, you're probably looking at that and saying it doesn't look even. The reason why it doesn't look even is because it's not dry. But once it dries, it's going to look nice and flat and nice and even. Now, what you have there are basically the purple and the red. It's not really blending in together. It just looks like it's dividing. So let me show you how to make a blend. To make a blend, normally you're supposed to be holding your can, especially if you have it on an easel like this, you're going to be holding your can up like, you know, up and down like that. What we're going to do now is change the direction of the can. If you change the direction of the can, well, then you're going to make a different type of line. You're going to make a different type of spray, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it down like this so the paint falls down. Now make sure you also probably have something like some plastic tarp because paint does fall, okay? Or do this in your garage, do this in your backyard. Anyways, we're going to go straight down, okay? Now you have a little bit more of a blend happening. You know, you can see the purple kind of just fading into the red. I think I could almost hear you guys through video saying ooh and ah. If you're not saying ooh and ah, then you're really, really hard to impress. But if you are hard, and hard to impress with them, let me figure out something more impressive. For some of you, you're going to call that finished. You're what we call a minimalist, and, and fair enough. You know, you've been on here watching me for the past 10 to 15 minutes, blabbing, 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 blab on. You painted two colors, and you're done. You're going home happy. Or you're staying at home, still very, very happy. If you're not happy with this and you feel like you can do more, I would suggest doing more. Now, this is where it can also get really fun. Find some things around your house to make shapes. Yeah? If you're young, once again, you still live with your parents, please ask your parents before you start painting stuff to make shapes. But what I'm going to use right here are basically, well, they're cake coolers. Yeah? And, and if your mom or your dad bakes or your sister or your brother or your cousin or your uncle, or whoever you live with, if any of them bake, they probably have some type of cake coolers or something like that. Yeah? I mean, seriously, you bake your cake, put the cake on top, cools the cake. Just that easy. But we're going to use these as a little design, okay? Normally with spray paint, spray paint dries really, really fast. This is pretty much almost fully dry already. So we're going to stick this on top and make some designs, okay? Check this out. I'm going to pick a nice dark blue because actually I don't have a reason. I'm just going to go with Valhoun Niche. Now I have a choice. I can put it directly in the middle, to the side, to the corner, anywhere I want. For me, personally, I'm going to put it up top. I'm just going to spray inside these lines. End up with something like that, okay? I was still going on and off. You saw I went outside the lines a little bit. See, that's the fun thing. I made a mistake. 
Well, actually, you wouldn't have known that until I told you. That's the beauty of this. If you make a mistake, you don't have to go around telling everyone you made a mistake. Just keep making that mistake over and over again, and it looks like you did it on purpose. Now, if you're feeling also a bit, you know, perfectionist and you don't want people to know that you made a mistake, also do this. People go up to you and say, why did you do that? You say, because it's art. Shuts everyone up. Trust me. Just do that. I say it's art. Shuts everyone up. Okay. So I'm going to put in some lighter blues as well. Keep piling on some paint. Make some designs out of this. Let's, let's see what happens. Okay. This is what happens when you say bottom niche. You just have some fun with it. Why not a little bit of a lighter blue? We're just going to keep going with blues. Why not? Now, you're probably wondering, how did I make the paint spatter out like that? You see a little bit of those little dots and everything that's happening? To do that, you're going to take the cap, you're going to pull it backwards and down at the same time. If you hold it at the right point, you're bending the tube that's inside the can, and it makes it spatter out. Think of it this way. If you ever had like a, I don't know, root beer float, if you've never had a root beer float, you've been deprived. Please go get a root beer float. Anyways, if you've ever had like a root beer float or, I don't know, a milkshake or a soda, whatever, and you have a straw and you bend the straw really, really, really tight and you still try to suck out the liquid or whatever you're drinking, and it just kind of spatters out, that's basically what we're doing. We're doing that same exact thing. That's also going to be my next thing, is how to drink a root beer float. Just kidding. All right. So I'm going to put in a little bit of white just to finish this up. I like something to burst that out. I like putting on dark colors then a nice light color on top. And there you have it. That is going to be my design. Yeah? Now, what you should also do is this. When you're painting, you want to look like you're really cool. So always do this. Study it. Make sure you look cool. Always got to look cool. So that's basically my background. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the hard part, that's the easy part. The real hard part for you, for you all is this thing called patience. You actually have to let this dry. All right, so while you're being patient and fanning it down, making sure it's nice and dry, I have to be honest with you, this is a lot like a cooking show. I've already had one baking in the oven, all right? So there is our background, nice and dry, nice and finished, ready to rock and roll. What are we going to do next? What you're going to need next are two contrasting colors. If you don't know what the contrast, uh, what the word contrast means, it, it's very, very simple. Very light, very dark, very, very opposite. Now, for an example, I'm going to use white and black, basically because those are the most simplest uh, contrasting colors you could ever think of. However, you can be way more creative than that. You can use a dark purple and a and a pink, uh, a dark purple and a very sky blue. I don't know why I'm sticking with dark purple, but, but you get the idea. All right. Very dark in a very, very light color. Very simple. Okay. So I got my white. I got my black. What you were to do though, you're to start with the light color first. I know what you're thinking. Why do you tell me what to do? I can start with the dark color if I want. That's true. You could start with the dark color first, but I'm probably going to laugh at you when the job is done. You definitely want to start with the light color first. All right. You can do it the other way around, but it doesn't always work out the way you want. Do it the basic way first and then learn how to experiment, okay? It's basic way, let's go with the light color first. Now, the other hard part is finding a spot for your stencil. Some people want it directly in the middle. I'm not that type of person. I think that's way too simple. So for me, I like to put it off the canvas, especially when you have something like this. This is what we call a terminating line. Okay, if I put it directly in the middle, it's going, you know, this part's going to come with it. It's going to look like she's being chopped off. But I'm probably going to do something like that anyways and show you how to mask it or how to cover that up. Okay, I'll show you in a minute. First, take your light color, find your position. 
What do you think? You think that looks good? I think that looks good. I'm going to go with that. If you don't think that looks good, I'm still just going to say, but I'm an artist. Anyways, what you're also going to need possibly, that's things that you're using as a fan. Take something like this, or you can use masking tape as well. And you want to cover up your edges. If you don't cover up your edges when you're painting this, you're going to paint a border all the way around it. Okay, so let's get this done, shall we? Still doing the on and off method. And voila. Now what you're thinking is, wow, that looks really cool. Or you're thinking, wow, that really doesn't look cool. Fair enough on both sides. It's not finished yet. See, we can't see what's happening. If you look closely at it, you can see that it's blending in a lot with the background. The background is actually going through her face and around her, so you can't really see what's happening. So what we're going to do next, we are going to take away that background that's going pretty much through her face. What we're going to do is we're going to create my favorite French word. It usually only sounds good when French people say it, which is basically everything that they ever say sounds good. Anyways, we're going to say the word silhouette. Yeah, Say it to yourself, silhouette. If you're not French, it probably doesn't sound super sexy. But if you are French, you're probably hearing it and saying, yes, I say this all the time. I'm not sure even why you're French, you'd say the word silhouette every single day. Anyways, you are to create a silhouette. Basically, that is filling in the background in her face. And I pretty much want to make a very light looking shadow, okay? Let me show you what I mean. On and off method still. That's basically what you're going to create. Now, some of you that don't know what I'm doing, you're probably looking at this and saying, but you're messing it up. Trust me, just give me a second. We're basically making a foundation color. We're going to put the dark color on top. That way you're going to be able to see the detail better, okay? So, once again, you got to do the fun part. Take some of these, and once again, fan it down, okay? With spray paint, it should take no more than about five to six minutes for as much paint as I use there. Now, what you're also thinking is, oh my goodness, if I fill this in, I'm probably going to go outside the lines. Yes, you probably will go outside the lines. So I can paint this the way you're going to do it. One, one second. That's basically what you're probably going to do. And that is okay. Try not to be a perfectionist about this, okay? Once again, the reason why this is still going to look good is because I spray painted that same mistake all the way around it. It creates a pattern, and it just looks like I did it on purpose. So we're going to wait for five to six minutes. No, I'm just kidding. This is going to dry rather, rather soon, okay? So five to six minutes, fan it down. All right, so I know you've been having fun watching paint dry because that's a thing. And you're probably stuck in the house anyway, so that was probably actually really entertaining for you anyways. Uh, but I don't want to wait any longer, yeah? So once again, this is a lot like a cooking show. So, once again, I've had one baking in the oven already. Nice and dry and ready to rock and roll. So, I'm going to put this back up on my easel. I'm going to take my stencil now and my dark color. And once again, I'm going to go right on top of it. Line it up as best as you can. If, if you have it offset a little bit, it's still going to look just fine. I promise you, it will still look good. Yeah, basically about there. Dark color once again. Oh, almost forgot. Have something to border it off with. All right, so dark color, on and off, on and off, left to right, up or down, diagonal. I don't care which direction you go. Just to make sure it nice, looks nice and professional, on and off. Have some can control with this, okay? On and off, on and off. Ooh, 
What you can also do with this part, now this is really interesting. I don't show this to everyone, I'm just showing it to you, You're getting an exclusive. I'm just kidding, I show this to a lot of people. Anyways, but you're still special, special right here, I promise. Anyways, what you can do next is highlight colors, okay? Highlight colors are basically a form of reflection, okay? So you wanna use colors that you used in your background. If you use a color that was never there, then it just looks kind of weird. But still, once again, you can always just say, but Curtis, this is art, which can break the rules to everything, okay? So, I'm just gonna pick one or two colors that I used in my background. <coughs> I'm going to go with the dark blue and the super light blue. Think that's okay? I think that's okay. I'm going to go with those colors. All right. So, let's have some fun with our hair, shall we? Maybe put it down the side of her a little bit as well. Now, notice I did not put on my borders. That's not because I'm actually trying to act cool. Actually, that is true. Yeah, I'm just trying to look cool. So I didn't put up borders. You should still use borders, though, unless you want to look cool. Do I look cool? I think I look cool. Okay, anyways. And that's it. Those are my little basic highlights. Now, this is the fun part. Take it off. And you have something like that. If you're clapping right now, that's great. If you're not clapping right now, please start clapping right about now. All right? So after you're done clapping, there's still something that can be done with this. Yeah? If you've noticed, she gets cut off there. Remember what I told you about that, the terminating line? So let me show you one other thing you can do. You can say, nicht, once again, and have some fun with this. That thing I was using as a fan, this thing, basically, I'm just going to rip it up, yeah? Do, 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 do. I really need some theme music with this, you know? I need to work on that. Next time we do this, I, I, gotta, I gotta do some theme music. All right, so. I think I'm done ripping this up. We're gonna go with that. Looks beautiful, right? Check this out. I'm gonna take this white, take this. Make a little bit of smoke out of it. For the bottom part, why not? Make a little bit of clouds. Now, if you're from Amsterdam, you're probably looking at all that smoke and saying, yeah, that's about right. Anyways, <laughs> there you have it. A lot of smoke, a little bit of clouds, cool little design in the background, highlight colors, 3D style. It's basically that simple. You can do this on a board, you can do this on a wall, you can do this on your kitchen table. Once again, though, if you're young, please ask your parents before you start wrecking up their home. Okay, fair enough. And that's basically it. If you follow these directions, you can make some really cool artwork like that. All right? Thank you so much. So, uh, I hope you really enjoyed yourself. I enjoyed myself. I put in a little bit more fumes than I usually do because I usually have a mask on. Uh, but I had a great experience showing you guys this. And if you really liked what you saw, then by all means, you need to come visit Berlin, come on our tours, and yeah, we'll show you how to do this in person. We'll also be able to take you around the city and show you how beautiful our city is and how enriched it is with graffiti and street art and all alternative styles of culture. Once again, uh, if you really enjoyed what you saw, then by all means, I would love it if you take Alternative Berlin Street Art Tour onto your wish list immediately. Just go ahead, do it. Do it right now. I know you're thinking about it. Don't think about it, just go ahead, do it, click it, go for it. Put it on your wish list. Thank you so much.